Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is electric field lines, and here's what we wish to learn today. What are electric field lines and how can they be constructed for single source charges and configurations of two or more source charges? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The electric field is a vector quantity, and like any vector quantity, it's fully described by two properties, the numerical value, or magnitude, and the direction. The magnitude of the electric field vector is given by this particular equation. The value, or magnitude, is directly proportional to the quantity of charge that's on the source charge creating the electric field, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation from that source charge. But being a vector, the electric field also has a direction. And by definition, the direction of the electric field vector is the direction that a positive test charge would be pushed or pulled when placed at any given location around the source charge. By logical extension, one would conclude that the direction of the electric field vector is always directed towards negative source charges and away from positive source charges. One means of representing information about the magnitude and the direction of the electric field vector around a source charge is to draw what we call lines of force diagrams. Here's a line of force diagram for a positive source charge. You'll notice that there are vector arrows drawn and that those arrows are longest at locations closest to the source charge and smallest at locations that are furthest away. You'll also notice that each arrow points away from the positive source charge. Here's another lines of force diagram for a negative source charge, you'll notice the same properties here, that the length of the arrow is larger for locations closer to the negative source, and that they're smaller at locations that are more distant from the source charge. You'll also notice that these arrows point towards the negative source charge. In both of these diagrams, the lengths of the arrow represent information about the magnitude of the electric field vector, and the direction of the arrows represent information about the direction of the electric field vector. Electric field line diagrams are often used to represent the magnitude and direction of the electric field around a source charge. In such situations, continuous lines are used to represent the electric field vector as these lines stretch between infinity and the source charge. Here's an example of an electric field line diagram for a positive source charge. Notice that the lines start at the surface of the source charge and extend towards infinity. And here is an electric field line diagram for a negative source charge. Notice here the direction of the lines are in the opposite direction starting at infinity and heading towards the surface of the negative source charge. When drawing electric field lines, it's important to follow a few simple rules for drawing them. The first has to do with placing an arrowhead on the line to indicate the direction. These directions should always go from positive source charges towards infinity, or from infinity towards negative source charges, or from a positive source charge towards a negative source charge. The second rule has to do with when lines join up with the surfaces of source charges. Make sure that those lines are drawn perpendicular to the surface at that join up location. And finally, our third rule is never cross your lines on electric field line diagrams. The density of the electric field lines in any given location on an electric field line diagram tells us information about the relative electric field at that particular location. Where the lines are more dense, the electric field is actually of greater magnitude. Electric field line density also tells us something about the quantity of charge on the source. As shown here by these two diagrams, whenever you have a greater quantity of charge on a source, you would draw more electric field lines from or towards that particular source charge's surface. So far, we've seen electric field line patterns for simple single source charges. But if you had a collection of two or more charges, you could draw electric field lines as well. It's often useful to have a field plotting program for such situations where you have configurations of two or more charges, such as this particular output from a program on our website called the Electric Field Line Plotter. You'll notice that it draws lines of forces around three charges that are configured as shown. If I were to convert this information to an electric field line diagram, I would simply draw continuous lines of force from a positive source to a negative source, or from positive sources towards infinity, or from infinity towards the negative sources. And it might end up looking something like this. You can do a contrast between the two diagrams, and you should notice that they look very similar to one another. When you're done, it's always good to go through a checklist to make sure you've done everything right. For instance, have you put arrowheads up on your electric field lines, and do those arrowheads point in the right direction? Have you actually 
drawn the lines perpendicular to the source charge's surface at the points where those lines join up with the surfaces? And finally, have you crossed any lines? Going through a simple checklist can help you catch some errors and perfect your electric field line diagram. Here is a different configuration of three source charges in the output from the line plotting program on our website. You'll notice the lines of force is drawn at various locations around this configuration of three source charges. And this is my effort to convert that information into an electric field line diagram. Now whenever you're done drawing an electric field line diagram, use a checklist to do a quick check that you've done everything correctly. For instance, have you put arrowheads on every one of your lines to indicate the proper direction? That pro proper direction would be from positive source charges towards infinity, from infinity towards negative source charges, or from positive source charges towards negative source charges. Have you drawn your lines perpendicular to the surface at the locations where those lines join up with the surface of source charges? And finally, have you avoided crossing any of your lines? So at this time in every video, I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website. The links to each one of these resources can be found in the description section of this video. The first is a Minds on Physics mission. The second is that electric field line plotting program on our website and the third one is a tutorial page. Any one of these could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.